Workers who got their bosses fired. How? Management was giving an injured worker shit, not wanting to pay him, accusing him of gold bricking. Worker said, tell you what, do the right thing here, or you will be sorry. Management said take your best shot. Worker called the EPA and act, told them where to find the logs, that showed discrepancies in toxic material storage and usage. Sheriff's deputies showed up, and raided the offices. Field supervisors from 10 years ago that had retired got subpoenaed. It was epic. Cost the company massively in fines and remediation. All because you wanted to fuck with one poor bastard. Not my story but my mother's. I watched on the sidelines as a teenager. My mother's job was basically a professional fundraiser. I really don't know what else to call it. People came to her for help raise money for non-profits or other foundations that needed it. This was a long time ago before social workers were more of a mandatory thing at high schools. My high school was very poor and did not have one. So my mother took it upon herself to set up a fundraiser to pay the salary of a social worker so my high school could have won. After raising all the money she went to talk to the principal who flat out refused to take any of it and said the position just wasn't necessary. My mother was pretty upset and just decided she would donate the money to supplies or something like that. I honestly have no idea what she did with it, but it did go to some sort of charity. After a few months, at a Christmas party the superintendent of all the public schools in the area was at the same party, and he struck up a conversation with my mother. After some small talk my mother said that it was such a shame that principal didn't take the money for the social worker's position. The superintendent was dumbstruck, and then told her that he had ordered principal to find funding for that position. And when superintendent asked him about it he replied with, no one is interested in that, and we just couldn't get the money for it. Needless to say he lost his position, and whenever we came back from the holiday break the school was hiring for his position. Worked register at a tour company. I also had a manager who fucking hated me for some reason. She was probably the bitchiest person I've ever met. Constantly yelled at us for not reason, got onto me about answering questions a new hire had, when I was asked, not her, wrote down I was 30 minutes late for a shift, when I was 2 minutes late, etc etc. We had a sneaking suspicion, that she was taking money from our tills, as she was always the one who counted down the till when someone got fired for stealing cash. I made it a habit, to count down every bill, when I gave it back to a customer, because we would get paid oct, if we were even $1 off. So if a customer had $23 in change, I'd count 20, 1, 2, 3 in front of them, so I knew I'd given back the right amount. We also had cameras pouring at the registers. Well, one day my GM pulls me aside, and says $20 was missing from my till and they were going to fire me. I straight up told my boss she could look at the cameras, because I counted out all my bills for customers. Lo and behold. Bitchy bitch was the one who counted down my till, and got caught on tape pocketing the money. She was gone by my next shift. Fuck you, Jennifer, I won. I've told it before. Not fired but transferred. Had a squad leader make us all stand out in the Missouri winter soaking wet until someone volunteered for weekend duty. I told him I had previous cold weather injuries, frostbite, he ignored it. The corporal saw my blue feet when I took off my boots and sent me to the aid station. The drive lost his shit and that squad leader was in another company the next day. It's not as justice bonering as getting an asshole fired, but it's the army that's not gonna happen. I got my boss disbarred. He was an attorney who was a serial sexual abuser of female clients slash criminal defendants. He got away with it for over 20 years, and preyed upon at least 12 different victims. The Office of Attorney Regulation censured him multiple times for other offenses, like being late to pay his annual bar fees, but even though they knew about at least 5 of the victims, they wouldn't disbar him. I discovered that the Office of Attorney Regulation decides whether to pursue an action against an attorney based on a cost slash benefit analysis. I gathered as much documentation of everything as I could over a 6 month period. Mine is pretty pedestrian, but very satisfying. I was working in a garden center. I'd been there a long time and was woefully overqualified for the job I'd been doing and was therefore very valuable in that position. Think ops manager skills that admin assistant position and pay. We lost our sales manager one year and corporate hired a new one. Let's call her Flora. 
She was. A real piece of work. I don't know what her interview looked like, but in person she was instantly and constantly rude and strident, and mean and curt and dismissive in that attention-seeking brand of lazy where she threw her weight around without cause, talked shit about anyone not in the room, and collected 75% of the credit for 5% of the work. She had some knowledge, I guess, but it's way easier to teach a competent manager how to grow flowers than it is to teach an asshole horticulturist how to be a human being. Anyway. For whatever reason, corporate loved her. So she stayed. What with one thing and another, I got another job. This process was slightly accelerated by Flora, but only a little. I'd been looking for some time, mostly waiting for the right opportunity. When I gave my two weeks notice, I got an email the next day scheduling my exit interview with the head of ours. Now, my position didn't get exit interviews. Only managers, and sometimes department supervisors, did. And everyone at my store knew why I was leaving, so there was literally asterisk and no asterisk reason for the store manager to pull strings to get me one. And he never said anything about it, but I knew. He set it up so I could tell the head of ours, a man I was very friendly with, that I was leaving because of Flora. And I did. I just just laid into her. I said that Flora was the only reason I was leaving after almost 10 years with the company, during which time I wrote the company's health and safety program, trained almost every other person who did my job at other stores, made spreadsheets that got used company-wide, as well as setting audit records that still stand to this day, and all for a few pennies over minimum wage. I said I was going, because she was the worst, and I couldn't take it anymore. I found out later she was let go. I was thanked by most of my old workmates. My manager never said a word about it to me then, or since. He was a real log. I used to work at a title company, and witnessed our department manager forge mortgage documents on a fairly regular basis. So when she went to upper management, to throw the entire department under the bus for being behind on recording documents, I marched straight two hours to resign, and let them know what she was doing. She was fired, and they called me, and offered my job back before the week was out. For a while I was a project manager who got moved around from project, to project as a fixer. I was moved to a project, where the customer just could not be satisfied, no matter how many people, how much attention, how we bent over for them. Our programs director, who should have been our advocate, would not manage the customer, and instead just hammered his employees, to do more more more. People on our team were being let go due to failure or quitting outright due to burnout and he was bitching that he couldn't get good people. Because of my sort of special position as general dog's body I happened to have the air of RVP and this project came up in casual conversation. I mentioned that it seemed funny that if the director was doing his job how so many employees that we knew by fact and reputation were good employees had failed. A week later I heard that the director had been let go, and nothing of value was lost. I used to be a store manager at sneaker slash sporting goods store in the mall. One of my co-managers was fucking one of my teenage, underage, employees in that back stock room after the store closed on a regular basis. This was going on for several months apparently. I found out when said teenager came to me, and she said, that my co-manager promised her a raise, that she never got. I asked her why he said that he would give her a raise. That is when she told me about the sex in the stockroom. I had to call the police and corporate about this. We arranged a sting with help of the girl as she acted out for the police that to meet up with my co-manager after work. Basically caught him with his pants down to use the term. Was working maintenance at an ice rink. The rule for anyone who knows how an ice rink works is if the Zamboni doors open you get the fuck off the ice. Some dickhead decided to ignore the fact that they were open and that I was standing in the doorway and decided to rip off one last slap shot. The puck bounced off the glass and hit me in the head. I was okay but reported it to my boss because we have to fill out an incident report for things like that. The boss asked are you okay? I said I feel okay. Then he responded with well, we don't really have to report it then do we? I reminded him of the protocol, but it was clear he didn't want to do it. 
Since he wouldn't do it, I sent a descriptive ML of the incident up to the administration. Because I felt there should be some sort of documentation slash paper trail in case god forbid I ended up having a brain hemorrhage or something a few days later. The boss was fired by my next shift. I was an intern at a tech company, and in a one-on-one -on -one slash mentorship meeting my boss asked me what skill set I wanted to pursue in the future. I said that I wanted to do backend work, this was a programming internship. He replied and said girls aren't smart enough for that type of work, how about we put you on the cap path, you'll do better there. At the time I was so stunned that I just repeated quietly that I wanted to do backend work, the meeting awkwardly ended after that. I always thought that I would be courageous in the face of blatant sexism if it ever happened to me, but instead I was silent because I was a 23 year old who really needed that internship to turn into a real job. Fast forward a couple weeks, and I was out to lunch with a few co-workers who brought along a lady who had worked at the company for years. She'd been out on contract for a while, so I hadn't met her yet. Everyone was talking about the boss and some of the stuff he had done, or said to them, mostly just rude things, so I took a chance and mentioned what happened in that meeting. She said she'd take care of it. Within a few days he was fired by the big boss. I went on my first contract doing backend work about a month later, and I loved it. As I understand it, I was not the first person to have serious complaints about him, just the last person. I had a job that required my supervisor to be doing evaluations of my cases and charts. She just hadn't in months. She and my director ordered me and my co-workers to do our own chart audits, fill out the forms, and they would sign off. I was so tired of not having adequate supervision, staff meetings weekly where she yelled at us, and invariably someone cried due to the stress and lack of support, and not having been paid enough to do everything I was doing in their job, I refused. I was told to do it, or I would be fired. Nope. So I got fired. On the way out to my car, I called my former director who had moved to another agency. She set up an interview for the next day, and I had a new job within 24 hours. She asked me what had happened at that interview. I spilled all the tea. Her sister-in-law was on the board of the previous agency, so she called her, and I told her everything too. Director was fired, and supervisor was reprimanded, and put on close monitoring. She had killed any chance of promotion, and left shortly afterwards, I heard. I was just happy to have jumped ship from that toxic mess. I should have left months earlier. Our manager spent her whole shift in the office watching us on camera, and if we so much as stopped to talk to each other she'd come out and yell at us to get back to work. She was completely immature. One time I left my water bottle at the front counter and my co-worker had to stop her from purposefully throwing it away. She would make up rules on the spot if she didn't like something someone did. I could go on. She was a terrible, unfriendly, hypocritical, mean manager. Honestly, we all just went to the owners and told them everything and how it made us feel. They got ours involved and got her fired and found out she may have been stealing or giving away product. It was such a relief. If you work for a small business, just be honest with the owners. If management isn't family. It was my supervisor. It got to the point that I had decided to quit. I had my resignation letter in my purse, but decided to let his boss know why I was quitting. Supervisor would talk about all the people on our team constantly, but only behind their backs. I got so sick of telling him to cut it out. My husband and I happened to work at the same place, different departments, and my supervisor would make sexual comments about threesomes with him, who were, what hotel we picked for our afternoon delight, shit like that. It was so bloody uncomfortable. Apart from this he spent most of his supervising time outside smoking. Problem was supervisor was one of the guys, and I was the only girl. Turns out his boss was disgusted, told his boss who lost his mind. They started an investigation which took 3 days. They interviewed staff, they corroborated what I said. They checked the security cameras, saw he was spending most of his work day outside smoking. And was fired. When he was told he guessed, wasn't hard. That I was the person who complained and tried to get to me to apologize. That I took it the wrong way. The best feeling was my co-workers surrounding me as he was wailed out. That was a lovely ending to it all. 
I had a boss who refused to make accommodations for a disabled Kaoka. Refused to keep other staff in line and basically let the disabled worker fall behind and get picked on because she, the boss, felt like she was not required to do anything else. I work for a local government agency and reported it to our hours and upper management. After they did nothing, I contacted them again to let them know I would be filing a suit with the ACLU for ADA violations. My boss was gone in two weeks and the rest of the staff had mandatory ADA trainings.